Hello and welcome to the Christian Mystic Podcast. My name is Daniel Lovett, and you're about to enjoy a conversation I had with Sam from Elevation Church in Green Bay. I met Sam at a prophecy meeting. He was the quiet one that evening, and when he finally did open his mouth, I was super blessed by what came out of it. And so I invited him to come and share his story, his encounter with God. It's amazing. You will be blessed, I'm sure. And we talk a lot about a lot of interesting things in this episode. Uh, if you'd like to sponsor this uh, channel, you can do so over at patreon.com slash reflect worship or put something in the virtual tip jar uh, in a PayPal uh, link in the description of this video. Thank you so much to all the patrons who make this possible and enjoy. If you'd like to subscribe and hit the notification bell and all that good stuff too. Well, Sam, I wanted to ask you, and this is what was really exciting when you started to share your, your story about your encounter with God and yes. like, even just sitting next to you, uh, like the interviewer in me came out and I'm like, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> so would you share that story, um, of your encounter with God and is, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So I, I've had a very interesting life. I will say that, um, God has revealed many things to me in, in, in the course of my life and, um, this is something that has stood the test of time as far as a testament to my faith. So I grew up in the church, uh, specifically in the church of God denomination. Um, I have a lot of friends in the church of God assemblies of God, but I, I was going for my, um, going through my MIP for my, uh, become a licensed pastor. This is around 17, 18 years old, um, to the MIP program. And I really felt God tugging at me to go to Bible college, you know, to, to reveal some things through me there. So, um, in 2000 ish, I went to 2001, I went to world harvest Bible college, which is now called Valor college. And if you're not familiar with that, that's where Rod Parsley preaches at, it's his school. Um, it's got a very good solid founding on it. It's got a very good background. Um, so I wanted to get involved with people that were just as excited as I was in the word. And it was intense. And some of these ministers that went through class now uh, when I was there are um, have really big ministries right now, huge followings. Um, and, you know, God really blessed. I think this portion of, of world harvest Bible college or valor college, um, we went through nine 11 together and out of 9-11, we had one of the greatest revivals I think that school has ever seen. Um, we saw after God in such a way that we weren't even having class. The spirit of God, as soon as you walked in the building, would just lay on top of you. It was, it was intense. But I started challenging God on things because I was like, you know, if I'm going to start leading people and this is who, what you want me to do, um, I, I want to a better relationship with you, you know? And so I was, I was reading through the word and I, I stumbled across Exodus um, chapter 33, starting with verse 12 and it goes to verse 22. And Moses really is like, I want to get to know you. Like, you know, here I am, I'm leading these people, but I want you to reveal yourself to me. So if you skip down to the 18th verse, I believe he specifically says in one translation, Lord, I beseech you, or, or I'm searching for you. I want you to show me who you are. And in other versions, he's saying, hey, just reveal to me your glory. Reveal to me who you are. Um, and he's, God specifically tells him, he goes, I'm going to reveal myself. You know, I have compassion who I have compassion. Um, and I have mercy on who I have mercy. And in this case, I'm going to let you see who I am. So Moses, out of genuine heart posture to get to know God decides he's going to ask this question. And God says, you know what? You're genuine about this. And I believe you want to see me. So I'm going to make a way you can't see my face, but here I am. I'm going to make a way for you. I'm going to hide you in the cleft of a rock and I'm going to cover you. And then when I pass, I'm going to proclaim myself and you can see my back. You can't see my face, but I'm going to let you see just a portion of who I am. And we all know the story of Moses's face shown after this, um, right after this moment, this is where the 10 commandments was written. But I really took that spot and started researching the 18th verse and looking at where Moses said, I'm searching for you 
I want to know you more. Um, and I apply that to my life. So I wrote it in my journal and uh, it was a blue journal. Um, if you do journal, uh, I, you know, it's a great thing. If you don't journal, I highly recommend it to anybody that's watching um, and write down what God's telling you so you don't forget it. But um, this really resonated in my heart. Um, so I put my book down, put my Bible down, put it on the head of my bunk bed. I slept on the top bunk and my room was full of people on the uh, uh, one side of the dorm. Um, there was just a very popular room. Everybody hung out in there and I, I, I went to sleep or what I thought was sleeping. And God took me somewhere and showed me who he was to a level I was not actually ready for, I think, or maybe in his, in his eyes, I was ready. And it shook my very being. It was like an out of body experience where I was seeing myself just laying prostrate before God and just worshiping him. And I, I'm in this garden, this beautiful garden of things that I had never seen before, things that I can never describe. And I'm walking through this and he goes, I'm going to take you through these things in life. And these are going to be some of the journeys that you're going to walk on. And the entire time I'm just praising him. I'm like, I'm shaking to in my core. I'm, I'm looking down at my body, just shaking. And in my spirit, I'm just shaking. And I'm like, wow, this is like, I know you're talking to me and I know I'm, I'm absorbing everything you're saying, but oh my goodness, you're just, you're, this feeling is so intense of being around this person. I mean, I've been around celebrities. I've been around a lot of famous people growing up and I never had that feeling like I had in this very moment. This was just something completely out of my core being, but it shook deep down inside of me. So then what seemed like days that I was sleeping was only a mere, a few mere minutes. Mm -hmm. And when I woke up out of this um, and came to, I was shaking when I woke up and I was covered in my tears, just crying. And yeah. There was one person out of that entire group of people that was there and on the, that whole wing of the Bible college that was actually upright. Everybody else was laid out. And um, it was a friend of mine. His name's is D'Lo, and uh, he's a Christian rapper. But um, he was sitting there, and he goes, I don't know what you prayed for, but whatever it was, the Spirit of God came in this place and shook this entire place. And there were people just laid out. I mean, some of the, some of the, again, some of the biggest names in, in prophetic ministry that are out there right now. Um, just unbelievable. Got a touch of God out of this situation or out of this question, this desire to know God more. And there's, there's other cases in the Bible where, you know, um, people long after him and, you know, he's revealing himself to him. And so uh, this was just one of these examples where I just I challenged my intimacy with Christ, oh, with God and Christ, and said, "I want to get to know you more. I want to understand who you are and what your Spirit can do inside of me. I, I've seen these other things. I've seen miracles. I've seen some of the craziest stuff. I saw a guy that got hit by a train walk out of a wheelchair. You know, <laughs> um, wow. it's it just absolutely." unbelievable things where people that could not move their arms, their arms became completely movable and people that could not stand, uh, could stand and people that could not see, could see, but he never touched me. Like he touched them at that moment. And I wanted to experience that. I wanted to have that type of relationship. Um, and that's where it came from. It came from a heart posture of intimacy of me wanting to know who he was and how he could effectively change my life. Um, and that carried over. And when I, chose to walk away, not completely, but I chose to walk away and start living my own life and, and doing my own thing. Um, that never stopped resonating in my mind. I would go work out or, um, and I would think of these moments when God really touched mm -hmm. me. And sometimes they would bring me back to the point where I was laying prostrate in a gym or I was wow. working on the, I was in the Navy and I was working on the ship and I'd have to separate myself from other people because like God was really working in my heart and it never stopped. And what was crazy was when I came back to this area, I had that same feeling. It was familiar. I recognized that same feeling I had at that moment years later. And it's almost like he grabbed me and said, you remember that now it's time to get to work. Hmm. And uh, it, it was just, it's been a huge part of, uh, me being in this area, the Fox Valley, and and doing ministry out here, and uh, um, 
where God has us going, my wife and I going now. So um, it plays a quintessential role in our, in our lives to the, till this day. And that was 20 years ago, 20, yes, 19 years ago. So, yes. I had a, a, an encounter with Jesus 20 years ago as well that reshaped the course of my life. And I can relate, you know? Yep. So would you say it was, it was Jesus that you met? It was or? definitely Jesus. Um, yeah. I, I remember calling out to him uh, mm-hmm. in, the, in that moment. So, Okay. Well, some people, you know, when they have these near-death experiences, they're, they like meet God and it's, and it's not, it, it doesn't always bear the name of Jesus. And I can see kind of why that Jesus would go incognito if there's like religious woundings. It's like they cannot perceive Jesus, the name Jesus any other way than, than this negative, you know, whatever kind of programming that the enemy has done on their minds with the name Jesus. Oh, I just interviewed somebody. I'm actually uploading it right now to the to to YouTube of a guy who met Jesus. Like he was there. And, and, and that he just said the name Jesus and it just resonated and reverberated. It was just like so powerful and so amazing um, about Jesus, like speaking with his higher self. And it seems like that's kind of what you experienced too, with like very much part so. of you is like laying prostrate. Part of you is like what up and observing and speaking with Jesus. It, it was like that. It's, it's kind of hard to describe because you're, 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 as I was walking through the garden and, and in these little gardens, he's showing me things there are different phases of my life that I was going through and I was going to experience. And, um, to this day, every single one of those events has happened except for two, which I believe are coming. Um, and some of them weren't so appealing to me. It actually, that was one of the pinnacle moments in my relationship, but one of the scariest, because I was like, I don't want to go through this. What's Mm. the alternative? let this cup pass for me kind of Jesus moment type thing. Yeah, it, it was, it was very, um, why would you call me into ministry just to tell me I'm not going to be doing this right away. And that, why would I feel this just to know that I was going to go through some stuff. But I think, I think David had some of those moments, you know, he walked with God and then later on in life, he had some, some other moments where he was being chased by Saul and questioning things. And, um, we, I think th- those are moments where, you know, we realize what God can do in our lives. And he, he reveals to us how big he really is and what role he really has in our lives. Um, he finds favor in certain people and, and, and charges them. And I, I think that's, I think it's unique. Yeah. So and it's always for everyone's highest good when he, mm-hmm. when he appoints someone or like, okay, this is going to really bless the most people and so it's like okay if, you, if you're feeling him limited or hindered or whatever it's like okay character building until you're ready to you know like like you talked you mentioned the name charlie champ and i've i've seen oh him. yeah i've seen his man you know what, what's funny is that when we we're having our meeting at church like that very day i had contacted charlie champ to interview him on my show you know and oh really there. yeah so charlie charlie was um Charlie was two rooms from me in Bible college. Um, we slept two rooms away from each other. Charlie, I, I'm going to say this about Charlie's ministry. If you ever question if that person is that way in ministry and outside of ministry, I'm going to let you know he's even more real outside of ministry than he is in his ministry. That man, um, if he's going to fast, he's definitely going to do it. He does it 110%. He lives in the word. Um, I can speak about his spirit and how he responds to the spirit of God. He is very, um, very much exactly who he shows himself to be. Um, I think in the spotlight, he reserves himself a little bit, but in private, he is very much at God's feet at the feet of the cross and saying, I want to know you more and, and really getting into, into him. He's, he's, uh, it was a pleasure to and an honor to be in college with some of these people. And he was one of them that you knew it was um, something was going to touch and, and transform the lives of, of others through him. Um, he, he, he's definitely lives it every moment of the day. So. Um, and that's amazing. I would love to hear any kind of visions or words you've had in regards to elevation church in green Bay. So um, some of them I can share, some of them I can't, um, okay. but God has really spoken to my heart recently. Uh, we're at an, I believe, a pinnacle moment 
uh, the precipice of change. And we are, what I had was a vision of like a veil being at our church and people seeing, you know, they, they want, they desire that intimacy more, but they're not letting go of something. They're, they're not at the moment. I don't know if it's their egos or, or you know, they're not checking in their egos at the door or not checking themselves. And I don't, I don't know this because I sit behind a camera most of the time and I'm, I'm, um, videotaping all these uh, things on stage, but I can feel it. And he, again, he showed me this stuff and he said, you know, is going to come a point where enough's going to be enough and that veil is going to be torn and I'm going to impact people and it's going to change this church forever. Um, there are going to be people that are going to be saved. You're going to see chains being broken off. People, You're going to watch the chains being broken off of people. It's not going to be your typical service. It's not going to be your typical moment where we're going to sing a couple songs. It's going to be the point where I'm going to show myself and I'm going to reveal myself to people in this church. And it's going to, people are going to want it. It's going to bring people in. Um, it's going to be contagious, mm. but I believe for such a time as this, this is where, it's, I believe it's going to happen soon. Um, I was sharing this with uh, another person the other day that, you know, I'm excited and nervous at the same time for this when it, when it does happen. Um, Elevation has been such a great home and I believe the spirit of God is there. You could, it's, sometimes it's thick, like it's, it's just, you could cut it, you know, it's just so yeah. thick in the room and you being at the front. Yeah. Um, but I did grow, I did grow up with, uh, philosophy from Pastor Parsley is that the atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles. Mm -hmm. And I believe we're at a point where people want to see miracles and they want God to do something in their life and that they need to go in and set the atmosphere of expectancy. They need to go in expecting they, to receive something from God and, and um, have faith that God's going to do something and just leave it at his feet. You know, a lot of times we have uh, we leave stuff at his feet and then we pick it back up. And we put that on because we're so used to being bound in slavery. Um, I, I said a message the other day on, on Facebook and it was talking about an elephant in the circus. They would train elephants. They would put a chain around their necks, around their ankles, and they would put a stake in the ground. And then when they did that, the animal would walk in a circle. Well, after a while, they could take the chain off and the animal would still walk in circles. So they still think they're in slavery. And a lot of times we leave stuff at the altar and then we just pick it back up and say, well, I hope God changes this, but you're just picking it back up. You left it there and then you picked it back up. Why would you do that? You know, yeah. your faith needs your faith. You need to allow your faith to be whole, you know, and, and say that and recognize that God is going to do something in your life. When I came to elevation, I lost a lot. Um, financially, I lost a lot. I lost, I had a business. Um, I watched it disappear in two days. I watched you know, a contract where $7.3 million just disappear. Hmm. Um, and I, to me, it was, just, it was a humbling experience. I was angry at God. I was like, you know, why are you doing this to me and things like that? But um, I also started picking up things that I was putting down at the altar. And I, he was like, if you leave, if you give me something, give it to me and I'm going to take it from you. But don't give it to me and then put that responsibility back on. You don't have to do that. You don't own it. You know, the Bible says he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And I wasn't allowing myself to be free. I was putting myself back in bondage because it was familiar. It was comfortable for me. Um, it was what I was used to. So, mm -hmm. but I believe in our church, we're getting to a point where God's going to shift something and it's going to start in our spirits. And I believe it has to do with those vessels being poured out into the church and then reciprocating down into others. Um, with this new wine, I, I believe that is a, quintessential moment in our church and how it's going to pour out it's going to be things that we've never seen before miracles that are going to happen an experience with him that goes beyond just putting our hands up um and saying thank you but actually receiving what he has and going there with the expectancy that i want to be touched by god god is going to touch me jesus is going to transform my life I, i'm not talking about it and i think that you know, we don't, we can talk about living in faith, but really, do you know what it's like to live in faith where you can lay it all on the table? And this past year I had to, I mean, my car almost got repoed. My truck almost got repoed. My banks, my accounts were seized. Um, and I stood in faith with God and he was like, you know, just stand in faith with me. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you. And every single one of my needs was met. And then the dynamic shifted where he goes, not only I'm going to 
I'll take these things, this burden off of you, but I'm going to restore you. And money started flowing in and my accounts got opened back up and the courts were like, you know what, Mr. Priest, we're sorry. You know, this was done in error, but here we go. We're correcting things. And it was like everything had been justified, you know, and, and, and God's grace really poured out. Um, but it really showed me who he was and how in that level of faith. And I think that we need to get to that level of faith where we're saying, we're going to leave it there. We're, we're done. I'm not playing these games. I don't want this anymore. I want you. And um, at that moment was where we're really going to see stuff change in elevation. And again, elevation is such a powerful church. Um, Revelacion, same thing. Um, I believe God's doing such a dynamic work in both those ministries and the school of supernatural ministry that, you know, you and I are both involved in. Um, I believe God's doing so much there and I believe he's going to hone some of these gifts and, uh, and the, in the process where you're going to see things. And as people who are seers see things, they, it makes more sense to them. And as people who are getting the gifts of prophecy that they start speaking these things into people, not for themselves or not out of themselves, but really just like God's touching you. Like this is boom. Let's, let's just, this is it not being reserved in our own thoughts and saying, you know, is it of you or is it not? Or should I go say something? Is it going to offend them? No, it's going to be done out of boldness and that boldness is going to be out through, through God. So, yeah. Yeah. I've been practicing that boldness for a while and, and, and usually I'm flying high. It's like when you were talking earlier about no limits and the, the elephant and the chains, it reminds me of a dream I had where I was like flying through the air and then somebody hands me a rope and to swing on like you know and i'm like why would i do that like i'm like uh you know why would i do that why would i be tethered no i'm gonna i'm gonna fly thank you very much <laughs> you know and uh may we we can i i don't know i think uh what what, what would you think i, I want to know what you think about how do people move into being untethered it's, it's life-changing. How do they, how do you move into that? Mine was a slap in the face of how to be, <laughs> you know, I, I would literally had to walk out on nothing and stand, find myself standing on something. And it wasn't an overnight change. Um, there was times that I, I, I let my own ideas get in the way of my faith and I started doubting and I pulled a, I pulled a Peter and looked down. So, you know, yeah. sometimes that happens, you know, but, uh, oh, yeah. The, that, that, we, we got to stop doing that and just let them have it. I, I, I for some, it's going to come the hard way. Um, for others who want to receive, I think there's a lot of people who want to receive. And I could tell, and this is, this is how kind of the reason I can tell people want to believe because they always look for other things. They're, they're looking for, um, answers and stars or answers in, in, in other areas of supernatural or, or things. And I think it leads to a certain level of wishy-washy Christianity, but we need to hone that in and say, well, you know, you're almost there. Like, you know, this is where it's at, you know? So, um, but I, I did and, find also, go ahead. And be encouraging and affirming to people where they're at instead of like, instead of offense, because like I just read it in Proverbs, if you, a brother offended is harder to win than a walled city. Those walls are mm. going to go up. It's like, mm. okay. Uh, so not, not offending the, the, you know, our brothers and sisters who might be thinking a little bit differently or yeah. a, not quite in the fullness of what they could be experiencing in Christ. I, I think for those of us who have a sort of stronger faith, we need to walk in a little bit more authority um, with that and, and really start pushing that. Um, if you read the, in there was a Luke chapter seven, it, the first part talks about the centurion and, you know, uh, Jesus was approached by his servants and he said, uh, you know, come to the house. We, I want you to help heal my servant. Oops, sorry. Keep hitting the camera. I want you to heal my servant. And, um, Later on, as they're walking towards uh, his house, the servants come out and the centurion sends a message saying, you know, I recognize your authority. If your authority is this strong, then you don't even have to show up. All you have to do is say it. And Jesus said, I've oh, never God. seen so much faith that here, even in Jerusalem, you know, this is so much faith that this guy knows that I, if, if I just say it and he recognized it. And I think, I think the centurion recognized a boss in, in leadership, a boss will recognize a boss leaders, recognize leaders with leadership mentality. 
And if you go out with the authority that God has put in your life as a leader in the church, it will reciprocate further. If you truly believe it and you start praying over those people, I think that's a, a, that shows the level of faith. I think we need to be examples. And some of us that went through some of this stuff and, and have that, I think this is where our position plays is that we become that example uh, of faith um, to help those that don't necessarily have that level of faith. They can see it in other ways. You know, when Jesus started healing people, he first had compassion and then he always, is always, your faith has made you whole um, or your faith has restored you along those lines. So um, getting yeah. to that level of faith is just, we need to be more like the centurion and recognize the authority that Christ has over us, you mm -hmm. know, and, and just let him, let him take yeah. control. That was a really good word for me because I was getting a download earlier today about the centurion. And, and him saying, uh, I myself am a man under authority. And I'm like thinking, huh, what, yeah. what does that mean for me right now? And what does it look like? Cause I think it's been, I think historically it's been done. I, I would say wrong, you know, with, with like the lording it over your faith, you know, like which Paul, Paul said, he said, I do not lord it over your faith. And Jesus said, Look at the Gentiles, how they run things. Not so with you, but the greatest among you will be the servant of all. You know, not to lord it over anybody. Uh, that's not the authority we're talking about. And I looked into the word no. of like influence. Being under the influence, that sounds like drunk <laughs> to me. Drunk in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, bring it on. Yeah. Do you, know, do you know who's one of the people that I saw drunk in the Holy Spirit a lot like that, though, was prophet charlie champ so yeah. <laughs> you know he was he was like that you know all day every day so oh that's um, wonderful that's how i aim to live i'm like i'm never coming <laughs> down i want to stay high all the time <laughs> yeah there's there's a certain level of uh you know you know when god like does stuff through you like you know that it, it you have like this certain feeling you know and it, it's i can't describe it you know you just you know like you know it's him yeah. you know he's doing something and i remember being younger at youth camps and things like that and and we had kids that wanted to receive the holy spirit and you'd have people praying over them and then you know god would charge you to go ahead and he would say i'm commanding you to release that spirit the of of doubt and release that spirit and when he starts working through you again it's it's kind of draining but at the same time it's like a it's like a refreshing high at the same time where he's like he's flowing his 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 spirit is flowing through you and just to get a piece of what other people are experiencing, just to know that feeling of what other people are experiencing in that moment is also, that's a blessing too, I think to a certain degree um, when God operates like that, you know? So it's just a, a glimpse of his glory and, and the chains being broken off that power of what it takes to really break down bondage and chains in people's lives. Um, yeah. I think as I, I think as Christians, we forget to we have a certain level of spiritual authority through Him. Um, I, I think I, I could go on and talk about this for a long time, but you know, shaky leadership sometimes is, or shaky followings come from shaky, shaky leadership and not taking ownership as a, as a leader of the responsibility of how we lead people and charging people. And and um, Pastor Ryan does such a good job leading people and, and, and charging. And I think as we operate under that same stuff, that same spirit, we need to go ahead and start showing these members of the church and, and, and other people around us that they can walk in that same authority. They really, truly are broken and they really, truly are delivered. Um, lead by example. Um, yeah. So. Lead by example and servant leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing I want to, uh, just bring up i mean i don't know if this is one of the things you couldn't share about <laughs> elevation but i loved what you shared about coming to receive like the gifts of the holy spirit yes so and, yeah go ahead so this part this part part i think this part pulls into the leadership portion of leaders saying to them stop asking and just receive mm -hmm. when god says i'm here do you i i had this analogy where you know, somebody's chasing after something, you know, and, and, and there's another person playing with them and they're chasing right, right behind them. And then they stop because they're like, oh, I, I don't know where they are because they're never looking behind. And then all of a sudden that other person collides right into them. You know, if you just stop for a minute and let God, don't overthink it, don't overdo it. All you have to do is just let it come out. Um, mm -hmm. I had a dream about our church 
where this veil, when this veil was being torn, that people were asking about speaking in tongues. They didn't know how. And the leadership in our church was saying, well, just receive it. Put your hands up and just receive it. Let the words, I'm actually getting goosebumps talking about this. Just receive what I have for you. Um, I think that's a quintessential point in, in ministry is God wants to talk to us and we're not willing to receive. I mean, you know, we're not really receptive to him. Just put your hands up and receive it. If you want healing, just put your hands up and receive it. If you, if you want uh, God to do restoration in your family, in your homes, put your hands up, leave it at his feet, like really leave it at his feet and, and, and receive what he has. But these gifts, the gifts of prophecy, the, you know, the gifts of speaking in tongues. Um, I know there's people that, that they have gifts. Um, I think we need to start really going ahead and, and, and saying, you know, we recognize these gifts in your life. We recognize the desire to have these gifts. Not everybody's going to get the same gifts, but to be able to pour out and say, you know what, just receive it um, and just let it happen. Stop, stop operating yourself. Take a moment and just let him be in control. What are you afraid of? Are you, are you afraid of, we're, I mean, we're all here together in church. You know, what's if somebody shames you for it, that's on them. I'm not going to shame you for getting filled with the spirit. I'm not going to shame for you for, for speaking in tongues or falling out in the spirit. I'm not going to shame you for chains getting broken. Mm-hmm. And all these leaderships, all these leaders in the church need to do the same thing and step up and say, well, there's no shame in this. There's no shame. There's no condemnation. Let God do it. He's done it to us. He can do it to you. You know, just receive it. Just, just take a hold of it. Uh, but I think, again, this, that moment is where we're going to see, those chains fall off and really life-changing things where people say, no, I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, and he showed me names. He showed me people who he's going to do this stuff and people who he really has a desire to touch and people who really have a desire to see him, but are afraid to let go. Um, but I believe this is going to be something, you know, like Benny Hinn fire, like almost like when you watch that and you see it on TV where it's just like people just receiving the fire and the, the power of the Holy spirit. Um, we go to a Pentecostal church <laughs> and <laughs> I, I believe at some point, you know, that, that idea of the Holy spirit just really reveling amen. in it and just amen. letting him just amen. dump amen. on our amen. church is coming. Um, I feel it. Like it, if you, you're there sometimes and you feel like this, this thickness in the room. You're just like, wow, it, it all it's going to take is this going to take one spark, one snap. This place is going to set apart like wildfire, you know? Um, and, and there are, you know, it happens in certain small things in certain pockets, but that big boom, you know, it's coming and yeah. it, it's going to tear apart this church to the point where you're not, you're going to see people are going to look at each other differently. People are going to look at themselves throughout the week, you know, um, when I came here, I was saying, well, God, I don't have a job. What are you going to do? And uh, he said, I'm going to provide for you. And I was like, what do you mean you're going to provide? I need a career. You know, this is what I was doing. I can go rebuild my business that I had before. And he goes, no, I'm going to give you something for right now. And I, I was like, why just right now? He was, this is provision. I called you to this church. I didn't call you. I called you this area to go reach people. And I called you to this church. I didn't call you for here for a job. That's just the provision. I'll provide for you. Don't worry about that. But we have work to do in this church and this is where things are going to change. Um, we need to let God be God. We need to let his spirit just go ahead and just rock our worlds. I'm down for it. I'm down. Like, I have no shame in crying. My first Sunday there, yeah. I bawled. I haven't bawled in years and I bawled like a baby because he was talking to me in the way he was talking to me. We need some of those moments where men can be men and not afraid to go ahead and cry in the spirit. Yeah. and pour their hearts out for him and where leaders in the church can go ahead and say, you know what? I'm just going to lay it all on the table. This isn't out of me. This isn't out of myself. This is all him. You know, it ain't about the show. It ain't about the lights. It ain't about the cameras. It ain't about the time frame. It's just him operating it. Could you imagine if people got jealous, mm-hmm. if they watched them, uh, watch stuff on church on Sunday and they go, wow, that was an hour and a half of people just getting laid out in the spirit. Why am I still here in my living room? <laughs> I'm jealous. I want to be there. Yeah. You know, could you imagine that? Yeah. You know, it's just, it, it's contagious. I'll tell you what, yeah. the Brownsville re- revival happened. It was contagious. Um, certain other, 
when certain other revivals happened, it was contagious. And I believe that in title town, God is going to champion some things that are going to be completely different than what we've ever seen before. He's going to take us out of our comfort zone and he's going to pour his spirit upon this place in such a dynamic way that it's going to, it's going to change green Bay um, for the better. So. Amen. Yes, I too have cried at Elevation Church you know, <laughs> during the worship. And I don't always sing because I've been singing for 20 years of my life. Like we, my wife and I are worship leaders. And, you know, I, I had a ministry in nursing homes up until COVID, you know, and uh, for 10 years or well, more than 10 years every day. So like singing, it's like not usually my, you know, go to form of actual worship, actual way I connect with God. But just mm -hmm. like receiving and prayer, speaking in tongues is a really big deal to me. So when you mm -hmm. mentioned that about like, I'm going forward, just, just receive it, open your mouth, let it flow out, you know, and, let it and flow. you know, as the spirit comes and I, and it reminded me of a dream I had of like all these brambles, like, like it was choking out the life of the spirit. Like I saw a picture of the spirit man, all these brambles and roots of darkness and soot and, you know, ash or whatever. And the mighty wind of Holy Spirit came through and blew it all away. And then the spirit started humming and doing its thing. And it was wonderful. It's amazing. Well, it was me. It was a picture of me, you know, mm -hmm. like when we just received the spirit, you know, we, we just spring to life and the rivers of living water, you know, and this living water, like you talked about being bold in our speech, like then if any man speaks, let him speak the oracles of God. So just letting that flow. Mm -hmm. I, I've been having such a kick, just letting him flow like that. I mean, I was having coffee with a friend just yesterday and like all of a sudden just this stuff came out. I'm like, wow, I just learned something. I just learned something as the Holy Spirit <laughs> flowed through, you know? You could be quite surprised at that boldness of what, when he start walking him, what he can do. Um, I take a look at Peter when Peter was denying Christ and he denied him and, and his speech betrayed him. When you start walking in the spirit and start operating in the in the movement of God, your speech might betray you and you might act different and talk different. And people recognize that. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's a great thing. Um, just imagine what that would do in our church, you know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, yeah. You know what? I that This did happen like Halloween night. They had a night of worship, which I'm so glad they did that. I brought a couple of my friends. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah. yeah. I was, and, and I'm like, I... You know, they said, if anybody has a word, you know, from the Lord, just come up on stage. I, I ended up going up there, not really knowing what I was going to say, you know, like I had a little inkling, but then all this stuff yeah. just started to come out. It was just like oh, about Papa's love and how affirmed you are. And it's like, come here, son, yep. you know. You know, what's crazy is I was actually texting Pastor Aaron the same things that you were saying as yeah. the service was going on. I wasn't there. Um, I had to drop my wife off. She sang that night. And then... um. I was in the room by myself and the spirit of God came over me and was like, you need it. I don't know who's in that, you know, I don't know who's in the room, but the spirit of God came over me and said, there's somebody there that's loved and they're going through some stuff. And this is what it is. It's a woman. Um, and she's really being challenged by some things. And as I was writing this stuff, pastor Aaron's like, this stuff is coming out in the church. It's being, it's being poured out. And it's to hear that affirmation of what his grace is being poured out his love being poured out you know um i think some people need to hear that and it mm -hmm. and also it's refreshing as in as to ministers sometimes you think like i'm getting a word but god was that you you know and i i not to say that you're doubting yourself but you get to a point where you're like you know i know you're talking to me but I don't want to say this wrong. I don't want to do this wrong, you know, and, and getting affirmation saying, yes, this is right. You know, this is, this is from the father. This is for somebody that's, that's refreshing for leadership in the church to also know that they have the right people in place so that when it comes down, when his glory is coming down, they can charge people to go ahead and, and to speak into other people's lives. Um, there's a discipleship movement happening where we're going to start to see, um, a, a route back to the basics of understanding who he is and, getting out of the the just a rawness of understanding who he is and how he operates um yeah i think the leaders in the church need to start taking on disciples themselves and showing these showing these younger generation that this is of god or this is not of god and really um honing in the spirits of the, the spirit of discernment and helping them guide them in the right direction you know um and really making fishers of men 
I think this is a, a drive that's coming out now to, to wake up the hokey Christianity and the, the wishy-washy Christianity or even the Christianity that be- the people that believed and then just walked away and want to take people down with them. Yeah. At the same time, that's so, so they can stand strong in their faith. Yeah. yeah I've, I've encountered some of these. Well, I think, yeah. Who are like evangelists for bad well, think, news, you know, <laughs> taking people away from. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think I, I, you know, really, I think there's going to be a lot of gifts that are going to be poured out. Um, I think the school of supernatural ministry is going to take such a powerful uh, turn um, in a direction that not that it's going to steer away from elevation, but it's going to help course things a little bit better um, to when people go up for prayer or people go do things, it's they can recognize and see things differently than what they're seeing them right now. Um, and, and can operate in that, but training another generation that comes in, that this is what it is. Um, Mandy Navity, um, when I saw her speak, you know, I'm, I'm seeing, it's crazy because, you know, you, just, you recognize leaders or authority recognizes authority. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I saw her as a platoon leader and I, I was in the service, but I see her as raising a powerful generation of women up um, in ministry and, and doing things in ministry um, to another level in the prophetic and, 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 and other gifts and um, really a gift of discernment you know, in understanding what's of the spirit and what's not of the spirit. I, I, I see that over, and I, this is not something I was going to say either, but I mean, this is, I, I see that these are things that I'm, that I'm starting to see um, in the shift in leaders in the church and, and how they play out. But um, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, I, like you're reminding me of like some of the friends that I've interacted with and I, I see their spirit man and like the holy spirit just is like working with me like seeing them as like a general like you know and like yeah like as as a as like a private or you know whatever kind of rank like i would die for you you know like that was kind of what was coming out of my heart and i was like what what's going on here like i would die for him really <laughs> that yeah. was what was coming out of my spirit <laughs> though like i was recognizing this is my this is a general and i would die for you but I, I see this. We as leaders, we need to start taking some ownership of the people, not necessarily in the church, but you know of, of what our position is in the church and how God is operating us to teach other people um, that it's okay and and you know you can operate like this. And this is what the you know the Bible says talks about the laying of hands and, and the speaking of tongues. It's, it's not wishy washy Christianity. That's real. And God does heal people and he does transform lives. That's real. It's not just something we talk about in a textbook. It's not just something that they used to do. It's not part of uh, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not progressive. It's, this, is, this has been happening for thousands of years. Um, and, and discernment, I think that he's going to bring out such a level of discernment where the people can pick out the wishy-washy and pick out the other stuff. Elevation's got a very unique culture, um, the way they do their DNA classes and the way they do their stuff. And that's one thing that really honed me in and it's not a, the heart posture stands so strong. Um, But out of that, you can also see and discern in people like what their, what the heart intent is. You can see the ones that really are in it and the ones that are just, they're there for the show. Um, COVID helped fix some of that, I think, to a certain degree, because if you didn't really want to be there, if you were doing it there for the wrong reasons, you didn't show up. And, um, they haven't been back so for the most part but now it's a time to you know now that a lot of the wheat is separated from chaff it's time to go ahead and and continue on and start you know making yeah you know doing what god wants us to do and, i want to talk really, about really that. holding in on him yeah i want to talk about that just because like jesus called us 12 and and like he had his like 72 or whatever there were some people that were left out of that group because he was like looking for a yeah. dynamic he was looking for a, a chemistry of these these beings together and i like i was hanging out with like three friends uh just yesterday like I, I was mentioning and we were all having the greatest time you know of, of interacting talking and it was just it was, it was it was really cool and then in walked another person and the entire dynamic shifted and changed. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, okay, we're, we're to your level now. How do we really, you know, like kind of like starting over, but it's like, Jesus wants, yeah. to, Jesus wants to go, go, go. You know, it's like, let's get a team that goes, 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 you know, instead of having to start over all the time from scratch. 
when a new dynamic is yeah there. you can <laughs> you can do a lot more with people who are willing and and i think how should i say this um you ever seen the movie moneyball no with brad pitt so it was a movie about it's a true story about the Oakland athletics and they weren't looking for they didn't have a budget but they're trying to build a, a great baseball team so they hired a statistician and they weren't looking for people that could hit home runs every single time they were looking for people that can get batters on base because as long as they can get batters on base they could get into home and, and start making runs and this worked um it actually became such a huge part of all the sports because they were hiring people that could do certain things and do their job, not just everybody that wanted to be a hero. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, in leadership, we need to look for people that their hearts are in the right place. And, you know, they might need a little bit of discipleship. They might be a little rough around the edges, but their hearts in the right yeah. place and, like, and, like and go from there. You know, <laughs> I'm a little rough around we're all, the edges sometimes. Yeah. We're all rough around the edges. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I, I, it's crazy. I'm not the same person I was 20 years ago. Um, I looked at where I was at a huge ego back in the day. I just an unbelievably huge ego. I thought I deserved things um, uh, because of what I was doing in ministry. I thought because of the people I was hanging out with, you know, I, I deserved to, to have this life. And, you know, I didn't realize that, you know, there was work that had to get put in. God humbled me. He's humbled me many times. Um, this last time, you yeah. know, it was and, a, and a you, huge like, humbling experience. One of the biggest revelations I had one night was around a fire and it came out to my friend, like humility is your best friend, you know? And it really, uh, it is that I've, I've resonated with that too. Like just, just remain humble. It's going to be okay. He, he always responds well to yeah. humility. Like even Ahab, like this, this guy who the Bible says, so who there's never a man like Ahab who sold his himself to do evil, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, and, but then the Lord responds to his humility when he humbles himself. And even to Manasseh, who was like one of the wickedest, wickedest kings, killing hundreds of innocents, you know, and, and children to, to Molech and everything else, uh, you know, all this Satan worship, basically. And he humbles himself mm -hmm. and he finds mercy and he's restored. And he's like, for the remaining years of his life, he's like, yay, follow God, you know? Um, yeah. Redemption. No idea yeah. That. Yeah. T end of 2019, early 2020, I would, if I could title it as a sermon, it would be called the threshing floor. You know, it was, uh, it was the part where God's humbled me and he separated with that. What was profitable from what wasn't profitable in my life. And, uh, really showed me that I needed to operate in him and not in myself. Um, and I'm nothing without him, you know? Um, yeah. You can uh, pray over whoever and it's, you know, if you're not operating under his authority under him and you're just operating yourself, you're not going to transform my lives. Goodness. You, you I know? just had a revelation so, when you said, I'm, I'm nothing without him. I'm nothing. I, we would be nothing without him. It's like, and then it, it dawned on me, Christ in you, the hope of glory, you know, like, we are, we are carriers uh, of yeah. <laughs> we're that's our core identity is really Jesus, you know. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing. He get, he gives us gifts, but he's we are really nothing really nothing without him. I, I've I've really learned that. Um, taking on this position, I, I have at work. I always told everybody at work, you know, if it wasn't for Jesus, people would see I'm the biggest fraud on the planet, and he has really transformed my mind and taught me things. And, and showed me who he really wants me to be and how much I need to operate in him and give it to him. Um, and not just on a super spiritual level, but even in, in the regular world, just on regular things in my job, like, God, I don't understand this. I need you to help me through with this. Um, I know where my weakness is. Could you give me some assistance here? And boom, changing everything. Yeah. Um, to, you know, 20 years ago, I would say, look at everything. And even, even two years ago when I, when I was doing stuff and I was getting ready to go to Texas, I was like, look at me. I even showed my dad my paycheck. And I was like, look at my purchase order. This is for me for one year. It's $387,000 just for me, not even any of my employees. $387,000 for me to show up to work, not even to, not even for my employees or any of us to do work. That's just for me for one year. I said, look what I built. Look what I did. Hmm. This is me. I did this dad. And that's, I, I, 
I realize now God was trying to do something in my life. And I just, I just let it go straight to my head. This isn't about me. This is about him, you know, and it was he, him who gave me the provision and I squandered things. It was him that gave me all this stuff. And I just, I just said it was out of myself, you know, it wasn't. And when it came down to it, the, at the end of the day, I, it took me a long time to realize that, but it was, it was him. So, yeah. And uh, a friend of mine reminded me when I was having a down day the other day that how eternally valued it, valuable it is just to help one other person along their spiritual journey toward Christ. You know, how internally and incredibly valuable that is. And it is relationships, friends for life, friends for eternity. Yep. A bigger family. That's priceless. Yep. Mm -hmm. Priceless. It truly is. So I just want to thank I, you for your I, time. I, have been... too. I don't know if we want to wrap it up. Yeah, no problem. Did you, have, did you have any more things that you wanted to share? Uh, not at this moment. I think uh, okay. we've covered everything that I would, you know, has been revealed to me that I can share at this moment. Um, yeah. There might be some things I might share with you in private in the future, but yes, I will you. say um, as, as one last thing, uh, be ready because mm -hmm. it's going to come. And I'm telling you what, it's going to, it's going to, the fire that's going to come is going to consume us all. And, and, mm -hmm. and God's got something for this church. God's got something for us. And it's not just our church, there's other churches too, but I'll tell you what, here in the Fox Valley, God's, God's prepping us for something. And I feel it. I feel it in my bones, it's shaking in my inside. I stay up at night because of it sometimes. Um, yeah. Cry about it sometimes, but Ooh, yeah, beautiful. he's coming for people that are hungry and right on the hunger is real. So. And all those who hunger will be yep. filled. Amen. Yep. Amen. Yeah. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Bless you, bro. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Bye. but God revealed something to me during that uh, prophetic moment. And it really went in line. I don't remember the brother that was in front of us sitting at the table, but uh, with his, with, he said he saw like a, um, like an upside down funnel being poured out. And uh, you know, it was similar along the lines of what I was saying was wine being poured out of one wine bin and uh, one wine um, container and into other wine containers. Yeah. Um, specifically four of them but like in an umbrella fashion and then those pouring into other ones, you know, and this was in a, this was a new wine, you know, and normally I don't speak on things like this. I don't, I don't do that kind of stuff, but um, you know, the real yeah. spirit really placed it on my heart to, to bring that out in yeah. conversation. So. And when you said that, like I was observing the fact that you were pretty quiet and I'm like, what's going through this guy's head, you know, the whole time I'm thinking <laughs> that. And then, then when you, when you, when you started to speak, I'm like, I'm really paying attention. You know, oh, okay. What do you have to say? And when you shared that, I'm I felt super blessed, like 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 the Holy Spirit, you know, inside of me. It, do you know it's one of the craziest things is when God speaks through me. He it's almost like I'm preaching to myself when He's speaking through me, and um, sometimes that can be very intimidating because I don't always say the right words. I don't always have the best speech. Um, and again, sometimes I stumble over my words. So I, I wasn't ready in my heart, actually, you know, as it was coming out through me as, as fast as it was coming in. And uh, it was intense to the point that when I got home that night, I actually didn't go to bed almost one o'clock in the morning. I had people messaging me and it was, it kept coming through. And even into yesterday, um, when I was putting my daughter to bed, I was sitting in the rocking chair and, and rocking her. And I'm, I'm replaying this word that God gave me. And, um, there's more to this. Um, but there's this word that he gave me and said, I'm going to, I'm going to pour this out. This is, this is one of the areas that I'm pouring it out and it's going to happen. It's going to happen here in this community and you're going to see it. And as it flows into one person, it's going to flow out to others and they're going to continue to bless others and continue to pour into others. 
And um, I think people are looking at the same wine, they're looking at the same methods, they're looking at the same spirit they were before. And this is new. This is refreshing. This is this is what God intended for us to have, not what man intended for us to have. So um, I'm excited to see where this is going to play over the next few months or weeks or days and into the community and how this is going to pour out. And uh, I, again, that was very an intense, an intense thing. So um and sometimes when the spirit moves through you, it's, I was telling my wife about this the other day, it's draining. It's almost like exhausting when he's speaking to you and you feel like being a vessel or when something is being poured into you and you're pouring it out, like a part of you washes with it, you know, and it's, uh, again, it's been very intense the last two days, um, absorbing a lot of that information. So, Yes, yes, indeed. And I want to touch on just being a new wineskin for the new wine that, that God's pouring out. And sometimes it, it might seem like, well, to me, it seems like, okay, the walls of this church aren't big enough to contain the love that I have for everyone. <laughs> so it's just going to like spill out. And I, and I, and I see myself as some of that, some, one of those that are like spilling out of the church. I mean, <clears> a lot of my, a lot of my, um, my show is about, I believe Jesus heart for building bridges with those in the new age. You know, mm -hmm. those who are connecting to some truth that Jesus wants to uh, kind of complete the picture. It's like, okay, this mm -hmm. is centered in me. There's not more than Christ to discover, but there's certainly more of Christ to discover. And a lot of mm -hmm. people are discovering Christ outside the walls of the church. I'm like, hey, did you know that that's in scripture or that Jesus revealed this to me about that? And so he still speaks, you know? And he's oh, still, he definitely still speaks. Yeah, he's still revealing himself and progressing our spiritual evolution you know mm -hmm. so that really spoke to me because about the new wineskins because uh that was like my prayer years ago i'm like lord i'll be one of those new wineskins when i read that i'm like i'll be one of those you know i'll be flexible with what you have to share with me and you know he shared stuff with me that had me afraid that i'd get tarred and feathered by the church honestly you know i became very like skeptical of whether the church would receive me you know or my message or whatever that i had to bring yeah so have you ever felt that have you ever felt like oh you know you got something from god that is like you know that you felt like the church wouldn't receive well yeah uh actually um pastor aaron and i've talked about quite a bit of this recently um there's been some things that I have, have been revealed to me and I've shared with him privately. I'm not going to share them for the show either, but, um, cause they're, they're meant to be private. Um, but it would not have been popular opinion. And in some cases could have been tarred and feathered in the church for having that idea. And then to see it come into fruition, um, you know, I, it wasn't something I wanted. It wasn't something that personally I had wanted to see, but it happened anyway. Um, and it, it really, it really shifted my heart on certain things. Um, and it allowed me to learn some, some things. Um, but it was one of those Jonah going to Nineveh moments where he was like, I'm going to go to Nineveh, you know, I'm not, you know what these people do, you know, I'm not, I don't want to go there. Yeah. Um, and sometimes things aren't always going to be popular opinion. I think in the prophetic, um, we need to understand that the prophecy is not always soothsaying and telling the future. That's just a small portion of things that happen. That's just a sign of prophecy or part of prophecy. It's not prophecy itself. And um, when Jonah went to Nineveh, he didn't go there with the intent of saying, um, you guys are all doomed. He went there and said, you know, if you don't change your wicked ways, this is what's going to happen to you. So um, there's balancing some of that has been very difficult for me um and, and doing stuff in the prophetic i don't believe prophecy is one of my my key gifts um but i believe it's one of the gifts that god gave me and i'm starting to see that come out and again it's it's a struggle moment for all of us when we start to see things in the prophetic that may not seem like the church would be accepting of it but you know i think the obedience is where it comes into play where he's not asking us if it's popular he's not asking us if it's okay in our hearts he's asking us um to go do it and a lot of times we'll take things that we want to hear and accept that as the prophecy that we want to hear but it's not always the case because it feels good to us you know but um sometimes that's shaking our house too it's shaking us first just as much as it's going to shake up to the people that we're going to be talking to or 
to the event. Yeah. And then so. we can have compassion on them and the way they will receive it. Cause you realize some of this might cause them consternation, some actual literal pain in their hearts, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm mindful of that. Um, I try to be mindful of that. I am cause it's, I've been <laughs> through that process myself. So like you're saying, you know, I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. I, uh, what do you got to say? I was going to say, uh, have you ever prophesied something and been rebuked by people in the church for that prophecy only to find out that it was what God gave you and that, you know, the rebuke was put in the wrong place. Um, yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> I'd say so. <laughs> it's a little hard to deal with sometimes. So it is, it is. And it's, it's like, maybe the Lord even like allowed that for our own humility because humility is so beautiful. Like I was yeah. having this Bible study with my son this morning. He's four years old. He comes down. I'm like, let's read the Bible together. All right. Go through Proverbs 18. And you know, a lot of what was in there was about humility and like mm -hmm. God always responds to humility. And so, you know, all of heaven's watching. So it's like, okay, maybe we need some practical examples of that being displayed in your life that it, it needs to come out so people can see what's what's sam made out of you know mm -hmm. what's what's in him is it has christ been fully formed in him yet because i mean like that's that's the process we're all going through but all yep. of us are going through it's like being formed in the image of christ and humility is one of the biggest things about that so mm -hmm. cool <laughs>